But then comes the functionality in it, because this is all measurements at rest. And when we test spasticity, we normally test it in resting patients, or at least we try to get them to relax as much so that we can really do it at rest. And the problem here is that the way that we know that the nervous system works normally is not this simplified view, which is actually the basis of antispastic treatment. We see it in this way, rather. The old way of looking at it, which is before 1960, uh, to be precise, is that we have something which is called reflexes, and we have another thing which is called voluntary movements. And it's possible to take these things apart and specifically treat the reflexes without interfering with the voluntary movements. And this is wrong. This is the way that things actually work. Those reflexes, also the stretch reflex, is being used by the brain in order to do the movements that we do. So in reality, there is a huge convergence between the sensory input to the spinal cord, to other levels of the central nervous system, and the descending motor command. So at all levels of the central nervous system, we have integration of sensory input and central motor commands. They cannot be taken apart. The brain uses the reflex mechanisms in order to do the movements that we do. We have much more problems doing the movements if we don't have those reflexes. So spasticity is an adaptation to the lack of descending control in order to help the brain to do those movements. And this is what we try to take away from the patients when we try to diminish the stretch reflex activity. This is just to point out what this is all about functionally, because this is a study that we did a couple of years ago, which I think in all its simplicity illustrates nicely what this is about. We had subjects just walking over the floor. We gave them glasses so that they couldn't see the floor in front of them, and therefore also couldn't see that there was a platform in the floor, which they would step on now and again, and that we could change the platform tilted more or less, either making it go downwards or making it go upwards. And we did it ever so little so that they couldn't really feel whether it was now going downwards, was level with the floor, was going upwards. So they would just walk over it and we could ask them, was it going upwards or downwards, and they usually wouldn't know. Then we looked at the muscle activity and we looked at the force in the muscle. And what you can see is that this is the time that they hit the platform. And then they go into the stance phase uh, and you get EMG activity in the soleus, gastric me medialis, gastric lateralis, etc. And what you see is that already 35 milliseconds after they hit the platform, the EMG activity is actually adjusted according to whether the platform goes up, is level, or goes down. This is actually a reflex mechanism, so that when you walk on the floor, you don't have to think that now it's going up a little bit, now it's going down a little bit, so I need to change my muscle activity in order to do that. There is a mechanism built into your spinal cord which makes sure in a reflex-like manner to adjust the EMG activity in your muscles to take the different irregularities of the flow into account. This is what we use reflexes for. There are lots of other examples of this. When we depress that reflex activity, we take away the ability of the patients to adjust their gait according to this. This is the consequence. Yes. How can you explain that the spinal cord and can we act in so fast a way? Because there are connections coming from uh, force sensors. Uh, when you have the impact, then within 35 milliseconds, this is the minimum latency where you can actually have a response. So uh, the latency of a stretch reflex, for instance, is in the order of 35 milliseconds. So it cannot be any other mechanism than a reflex mechanism going through the spinal cord. But the nerve signal have to go one meter to the spinal cord, have a synapse activity, and go and down again. Yeah. yeah, and it does that in 35 milliseconds. It's quick. 
So um, that's the point. Uh, so, so basically here it's, it's not an anticipatory reaction. The subjects cannot anticipate whether the platform goes up and down. So it is a reaction which comes evoked by uh, this uh, platform going up and down. Um, so